Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my loves. I want to give you guys a quick shout out. Those of you guys that had reached out to me uh, through my other social media platforms, I thank you so much and I want you to know that your love does not go unappreciated. I genuinely and authentic authentically thank you for that. Um, if you don't follow me on social media, you can find my socials at the bottom of the description box below. Uh, if you guys are interested in personal reading, spell work, any of the spiritual work that we do, or any of our manifestation books and journals, you can find all of that on the description box below. All right, Aquarius, you are one of the signs that is really, really, you know, like Capricorn that are really going through it. <laughs> and you guys are already seeing the massive expansion or the massive difficulty. But the beauty in this is that Pluto is transforming your life wherever you have your sun uh, of aquarius wherever it's placed in your chart that's the theme that is going to be touching that it's going to be going into that it's going to be transforming so we have pluto in retrograde right now and it went retrograde may the second and what this means is unlike mars and mercury that it makes it more difficult when pluto a generational planet a planet that moves very, very slow, goes retrograde. Instead of disempowering you, it actually empowers you. So because it's retrograde in Aquarius, um, you guys are going to be seeing themes come up or dealing with certain situations that recently, I want to say the past six months, maybe even since last year, you felt like you were disempowered or you felt like your power was taken or you felt even helpless in certain aspects of your life. Now that it's going retrograde, it's going to kind of bring about those same themes, but it's bringing your power back. It's bringing you your money back. It's bringing your um, your potential. It's, it's reminding you, okay, Aquarius, we had to go through this because these are life lessons that need to happen. But I'm empowering you. I'm lighting that fire under your ass so that you can get it together and so that you can be much more stronger, much more smarter, much more faster. So there is a lot of momentum that's picking up. Now, Pluto will be dipping back into Capricorn in the last degrees of Capricorn before it goes back into your sign, staying there for the next 15 years. So in the dipping of back of Capricorn in its last degree, it's bringing to you a blessing or it's bringing to you um, some type of power. Now, a lot of people fear Pluto because it is a scary planet because <laughs> of it's a generational planet and it's transformative, right? It, Pluto, it, it's this, you know, it rules over Scorpio, everything that has to do with darkness, death, life, rebirth, but see Pluto as a Phoenix, right? That it rises from the ashes. It's going to hit home depending on what home that means to you, depending on where you have Aquarius and Capricorn placement look at that home that house that's the theme that you're dealing with but once it hits home it burns down so that it can rebuild so that it can fortify and strengthen that house that it's in so again a lot of you guys are going to be experiencing almost this momentum start to pick up um again like i said feeling more empowered feeling like your power is back or it's coming back tenfold you're coming back stronger than ever um and not only that, but again, people forget, you know, Pluto is a very powerful planet, but it also brings power and it brings money. Uh, that's something that people often forget to mention about Pluto. <laughs> so again, a lot of massive transformation that's happening for you, Aquarius. And we're already seeing this in the news, in social media, you know, people that were, when Pluto was in Capricorn, the dark side of Capricorn is gaining power or retaining power regardless at whose expense aquarius is the opposite it is for the collective what benefits everyone so again we're seeing that theme play out uh in celebrity culture right now people you know airing their dirty laundry and people getting caught up and people going to jail and it's gonna continue why because and it's not just celebrity also government and anything that has to do with Capricornian energy because we're moving into Aquarius energy. And again, it is about the collective. It is about, you know, um, as an example, for some of you guys, you're already noticing like even people that are uh, influencers, right? 
uh, or actresses and actors that are being dragged because people are just not connecting with them. They're so delusional or they've found themselves to feel like they're untouchable. And with Pluto being an Aquarius, it's like, if I can relate to you, like, why the fuck are we making you famous type of energy? So a lot of you guys throughout the years, and I'm talking about not now, we're already seeing that theme, but it will continue to play out as we prog progress in the transit of Pluto being an Aquarius. We're going to start to see people step to power or people gaining power and popularity, um, fortune and fame that are considered right now underdogs. And it's because Aquarius rules over that, right? The underdog. It is about what is best for everyone, not what is best for me type of energy. So again, you know, people that are very delusional right now are being dragged. They're kind of being confronted with having to deal with consequences. And that's something that is going to continue. We also experience the solar eclipse, or I should say eclipse season, which is massive. It has transformed everyone's life. And we had the North Node in Libra, shedding old patterns, old behaviors to create balance in our life. North Node in Aries, being more proactive, being more aggressive in your pursuits and making shit happen. Uh, Chiron also in Aries, the wounded healer, having to face shadow aspects of ourselves from early childhood to heal, to put us back together so that we can continue on our path uh, to our highest version. We also just experienced the conjunction of Uranus with Jupiter. A strike of luck, opportunity, abundance coming in. For some of you guys, you're experiencing this or you will be experiencing this. For others of you, uh, we also just recently have Taurus going into Venus and the sun is in Taurus. So two benefic planets bring blessings, bring opportunities to look at your chart, look at where Taurus is placed. That's what you can expect uh, to be blessed in. So a lot of massive transformation and changes that are happening. If you're going through it, Aquarius, just remember your power is coming back to you. Do not doubt yourself and believe in yourself and it's time to go hard, okay? Uh, that's, that's the only thing I can say. When Pluto brings back our power, we have to step up and really step up to the plate and push ourselves to the limit because only through that are you able to experience massive transformation. So here we go, Aquarius. Let's get into your reading. Let's see what spirit has for you guys. I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love. My ascendant masters, please step forward. <sighs> Allow us to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2024. Give us clarity. Give us insight. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay, Aquarius. Let's see what is unfolding for you guys. For this month of May 2024, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, what is unfolding? I want to apologize for the long intro, but it's a lot of celestial events and transits and just a lot that's happening. So I wanted to give you guys an update and give you guys or keep you guys on the loop. All right, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, what can you expect for this month of May 2024? May 2024, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Aquarius. All right, we're starting off here with the Seven of Pentacles, uh, the Wheel of Fortune, the Page of Swords, the Two of Swords, Five of Pentacles, and the Page of Pentacles. Okay, so again, like I said, I feel like um, through this Platonian energy that we're experiencing, these transits that are happening, uh, obviously uh, Capricorn and Pluto, uh, sorry, Capricorn and Aquarius are one of the signs that are really like experiencing that on a deeper level or more, much more transformative level. But what they're showing me here with the Seven of Pentacles is revisiting the past or going to the past. Again, the North Node being in Aries and Chiron being there, it's kind of like we're all being forced, right, to deal with our shadow aspects. Things that instead of help us, hinder us in our self-growth, in our soul development, it's revisiting the past, having the opportunity to revisit the past with the Page of Swords. It's you being proactive towards understanding where we effed up or where we've allowed certain things to unfold in our life it's kind of like a reminder and again keep in mind pluto is retrograde in your sign aquarius so for a lot of you guys yes it has obviously obviously has to do with revisiting the past and knowing um the importance or the empowerment that comes with taking self-responsibility so what do i mean by this for a lot of the time people have a tendency, it's easier for us to point the finger or blame other people for our circumstances, right? 
but that disempowers you and that empowers the other people around you. When you take your power back and you no longer play the victim role or you no longer say, you know what, poor me, like, no, fuck that. I'm going to make things happen. And maybe I did play a part in this or in that. You're empowering yourself. So again, if you are dealing with these themes right now, Aquarius, where you're kind of like, think of it as the universe kind of forcing you to deal with situations, circumstances, or even people from the past and having to separate your intuition from your ego, I highly encourage you guys to listen to your intuition. A lot of people do have a tendency of confusing ego and, you know, ego and intuition. And the best way of knowing how to distinguish one with from the other, it's quite simple. If you feel that there is an opportunity that is coming up and you know that you feel some type of regret, some type of remorse, some type of you know, I could have done it different. I could have, and that opportunity presents itself. Aquarius, grab that opportunity and make it happen. Step up to the plate. Take self-responsibility for the role that you played in that situation with that person or with that circumstance. Because by doing that, not only are is your soul evolving, not only are you stepping up to your highest version, but how many times in our life do we get the opportunity to revisit the past to make it right? So again, what they're telling you is try the best you can not to vibrate from your ego or your pride. This is shadow side, you guys. And with the Aries North Node and Chiron and the solar eclipse that recently happened, I feel for a lot of you guys, you're going to be triggered on an ego based, again, your shadow side, but it's overcoming that. It's understanding that, you know what, I am no longer who I was three years ago. I'm no longer who I was 10 years ago. I'm no longer who I was yesterday because now I'm more aware. And we as humans have the possibility and the power to continue evolving and growing. Stop doubting yourself because I do see a lot of doubt here with the two of swords and the five of pentacles. It's almost like kind of uh, disassociating or disconnecting because you are very much in your head. But what spirit is telling you here with the page of pentacles, you know, slow and steady wins the race. So if you're working towards something and it's, as an example, career and finances, it, it's been slow or it's progressively not doing that well, slow and steady wins the race. What I mean by that is don't get, again, don't get in the vic victim mentality. All of this is coming at me at once. Yeah, it might feel that way, but understand that it's because we're kind of, you know, think of it as the universe putting pressure on you to bring out that bloom, that rose to bloom in you, right? To to become who you were meant to be, Aquarius, and especially with the Seven of Pentacles and Jupiter here, you're going to see the rewards. You're going to see abundance. You're going to see financial stability come through, especially for those of you guys that have been working hard towards making things happen. Now is the time that you're going to really think of it. And what I'm hearing for some of you guys is reinventing yourself. So for some of you guys, um, maybe you're thinking of like changing up your look. For others of you, maybe you're focus more like on a physical aspect, working on yourself and developing yourself and making yourself better. There is a reinventing type of energy here. If it's not on a physical aspect, like I said, it could be reinventing your career. Um, it could be reinventing your reputation for some of you guys. And I do see more op opportunity and possibilities coming through for you, especially with the seven of cups, sorry, seven of pentacles and the, um, the the wheel of fortune which is jupiter energy again it's almost like favor or your luck is about to be in your favor you're turning the wheel you're going from difficulty and you know uncertainty to having a very clear picture of what it is that you want and being unapologetic in chasing that pursuit so again remember north node in aries be proactive make things happen no more making excuses get up out of your seat and make shit happen because basically there is no limit to how much you can grow and how much uh, advancement you can take, okay? All right, my lovely Aquarius, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. Like, share, and comment, and I will see you guys soon. Until then, bye.